Tons of tons of Earth's crust and mantle out into space and into orbit around the Earth. Within a few thousand years, this debris clumped together to form the moon. Advanced computer models show that the collision was a glancing blow. The other planet did not hit Earth head on. This meant that while Earth's outer layers were ripped off, none of its iron core was blasted away. That lack of iron would end up explaining why, why we have a moon that, that is only the rocky material without the iron material. Hartman's collision idea is now accepted as fact. It was his fascination with the moon that led to a new understanding about a vital stage in the formation of the Earth. The moon always, to me, is a reminder that we live in a larger environment than just the Earth. It's the cosmic environment. The inner solar system is our environment that we can move around in now. In the quest to discover the age of the Earth, Evidence from radiometric dating of meteorites proves that the Earth was formed just over 4.5 billion years ago. The lack of iron in rocks brought back from the moon is evidence that the Earth survived a massive collision with another planet. But vital parts of the modern Earth were still missing from the newly born planet. The investigation now needs to figure out how the Earth gained two essential components solid land and water. Four point five billion years ago, Earth formed out of the solar dust cloud, then survived a devastating impact with another planet. The investigation now moves 200 million years forward in time as scientists tried to discover how the first continents and oceans formed. They are looking for evidence on the northeast shores of Hudson Bay, Canada. This is the desolate landscape of Porpoise Cove, the site of an important new scientific discovery. And it's all down to a young PhD student's fascination with ancient rocks. I was interested in studying the early Earth. So the idea is to get as far as we can back in time to get these old rocks and study rocks that were there in the past. Geologists already knew that rocks in this part of northern Canada are extremely old. But something about a small area in this vast wilderness caught O'Neill's eye. The overall aspect of the rocks really looked different. And right away we knew that something was, was really bizarre, really unusual about these rocks. The rocks are highly altered, deformed volcanic lavas known as amphibolites. The chemistry was unusual, the mineralogy was unusual, and nobody had seen rocks like that before. O'Neill decided the rocks needed further investigation. He sent samples to be radiometrically dated. The results were astounding. We were in the lab in Washington, D.C. when we first got the first number out of the machine. And the first, the first reaction is we didn't believe it. So what you do is you reanalyze the rock a second time. And then the same number comes up. And then a third time. And then again and again. So you say, OK, we'll analyze more of these rocks because I can't believe it. And these numbers, the signature, this really, really old signature, keep coming up, keep coming up, and keep coming up. And in the end, you have to come to the conclusion that these rocks have been formed nearly 4.3 billion years ago. The results were indisputable. The amphibolites are 4.28 billion years old, 200 million years older than any other rocks so far discovered. They are the closest anyone has come to finding Earth's original crust. These are the oldest rocks in the world, and it's amazing when you stand on it. You can try to imagine yourself almost 4.3 billion years ago when the Earth was so young and just barely forming. Walking on this landscape, 
and it's a really amazing feeling. These rocks are now yielding clues about the thickness of the early crust. O'Neill has found unusual minerals which can only form in conditions of very high temperature and pressure. They prove that the amphibolites were made at least 12 miles down in the crust of the Earth. This means that more than 4 billion years ago, Earth had a solid crust at least 12 miles thick. And a crust that thick suggests there must have been continents. And there's more. Evidence hidden in the amphibolites reveals that these rocks must have originally formed deep underwater. Well, you have to understand that when rocks form, they can record their chemical signature. And depending on where the rocks are formed and what geological context they will be formed, they will carry that specific chemical signature. The chemical signature of the amphibolites is unique. It proves that when these rocks formed, Earth had not only a solid crust, but oceans. The signature we see here, it really looks like an oceanic floor. That means there was an ocean and a lot of water already at 4.28 billion years old. So it totally changes our view of what the Earth was like before. To the scientific world, this idea is dynamite. But O'Neill is not on his own. There is more evidence to back up his claim. In the same ancient rock sequence, geologists find another unexpected rock type called banded iron formations. These rocks are made up of alternating light layers of silica and dark bands full of a mineral called magnetite, which, as the name suggests, are rich in iron. We usually use a magnet to, to try to find these uh, minerals. It's a quick and easy way to uh, identify for sure those rocks as banded iron formation. Magnetite in banded iron formations only forms underwater. So these rocks are further evidence that there were oceans on Earth more than four billion years ago. But scientists don't know how much of Earth's surface was covered by water. The only way to form this magnetite is to be like in an ocean. We don't know exactly what was the, the ocean at that time, but we know for sure that we need water to form those rocks. These discoveries are forcing geologists to rethink their ideas of what conditions were like on Earth less than 300 million years after the planet formed. People often think of this earlier like a ball of fire, a molten rock, but this is not the picture that we see here. We see that already at 4.28 billion years old, we probably had an ocean. We had continent that really, really looks like what we know today. So it changes totally our view of the early Earth. The investigation has now revealed when the Earth's continents and oceans began to form. Evidence from amphibolite rocks at Porpoise Cove confirms that the Earth had developed a thick solid crust 4.28 billion years ago. Banded iron formations in the same rocks show that there were oceans on Earth's surface at the same time. All of which raises another mystery. If oceans existed more than four billion years ago, the investigation needs to figure out where all the water came from. After its formation from the solar dust cloud 4.5 billion years ago, Earth was a fiery ball of molten rock. But 200 million years later, the first oceans were already forming. And Earth today is the blue planet with 70% of its surface covered by water. The investigation now looks at the mystery of the origin of Earth's water. One of the important questions I've always thought about is, you know, where did all of this come from, all of this water? All the water in the oceans and in the atmosphere, in our bodies, in the ground?